Hello folks, in this video we're going to have a look at setting up the player live system and we're also going to implement a system for respawning the player after they have died and once their lives reaches a value of zero we're then going to move on to a game over screen or something like that. Uh, at the minute all I've got in the scene is a player which is down there in the enemy up there. I've also got the, uh, the player in the library, a player projectile which we probably won't need but I put it in anyway, uh, an enemy and the enemy projectile. So the enemy has a behavior on it, or rather a timer and a behavior. So every two seconds it will spawn the enemy projectile. And the enemy projectile has just got a move behavior on it, which is gonna make it automatically move down. The player at the moment can only move, uh, I'll delete that, <laughs> can only move left and right at the moment. So I'll just press play to show you. I can move left and right. The enemy fires projectiles at me, but nothing happens just yet. And that's what we're going to set up now. So I guess the first place to start would be to at least just get the player uh, being destroyed by the uh, the enemy projectile. Now we could set this up with the uh, health system included as well. Maybe we'll have a look at that towards the end of the video. But we'll just stick to the simple parts for now. So uh, on our player, we're going to set up a rule. And that rule will be um, based on a collision. So collision will be our condition. And we're going to say, uh, when this player collides with the enemy projectile, we're going to destroy the player. So with our collision condition, we're going to say, um, actor overlaps or collides with enemy of type enemy projectile. And do destroy this actor, which means it's going to destroy the player when the player collides with the enemy projectile. Let's have a quick look, make sure it works. All right, fantastic, but obviously it doesn't spawn back in yet, so we do need to fix that. So, to get it to spawn back in, I'm gonna have to create a game attribute, which kind of registers whether or not the player is dead. So we're gonna make a brand new attribute, we're gonna come down the attributes tab, the game tab, and we're gonna make a new attribute, and it's gonna be a boolean, which can only be true or false. I'm gonna call this one player dead with a question mark at the end. Um, now we need to use this so that the game knows when it should respawn the player back in because there is no condition for is player dead so we have to make an attribute which will be changed. So we're going to need to make a brand new actor and I often use these things, I, I can drop them in the background of the game. Um, I'm going to call it the controller and I use the controller for various game mechanics like you know, respawning players or controlling music or, or various other things that you might not need to put directly onto any particular actor in the game. And it'll either just sit off to the side where it's not visible or we can make it invisible, it doesn't really matter. It's not going to have any bearing on the game other than it will control certain mechanics but please be aware that you do need to have it somewhere in the stage for it to actually be taken effect otherwise it just simply won't work so I'm just going to remove it for now and we'll put it back in later on. Now we're going to go back to the player here and we're going to add an extra behavior into our do section here so that when the enemy, uh, sorry, when the player does collide with the enemy projectile, it won't just destroy the actor. It's also going to change this attribute, player dead, to true. So that way the game knows that we are in a state of the player is dead and therefore we can respawn the player. So we're going to add in a change attribute and I'm just going to put it above the destroy. And the attribute that we're going to change is of course a game attribute and there is our player dead and we want to change that to true. So when the player collides with the enemy projectile, it will change the attribute player dead to true, and it will destroy the, uh, the player itself. What I'm also going to do is, um, on the controller here, I'm just going to put a display text behavior on, and we're not going to get it to display hello world, delete that. We want it to display that player dead attribute to us. So I'm just going to click the little E symbol there, just click on the E symbol, get rid of hello world, go attributes, game, player dead, press tick, and we'll change it to something other than white so it stands out. And really I'm just using this so that I can see whether or not the attribute does change from false to true when the player gets killed. So we'll press play, it's at false at the moment, player gets hit, player is destroyed, attribute goes to true. Great. So now the game knows that the player is dead, which is a great start. So back to the controller on the prototype, and now we're going to make a brand new rule that is going to be based on, the condition is going to be our player dead attribute. So the condition will be an attribute. Click the A symbol to find the attribute browser. We're going to go attributes, game, 
player dead and we get the option of true or false so we're going to say if player dead is true do spawn actor player and now we need to determine the player's position so where do we want to spawn it we're going to spawn it at let's say 160 on the x and 60 on the y oops the controller so x before y 160 on the x 60 on the y and we need to make sure that that is set to relative to scene all right so now basically this rule says whenever the attribute player dead is true spawn the player in this exact location so let's have a look when the player dies oh it happens far too quickly it happens so quickly that it dies again instantly so what we're going to use here is a timer to offset that spawn so we can just add a timer in underneath and take the spawn actor into the timer and we'll set it for after let's say three seconds and we need to make sure run to completion is turned on so effectively what's going to happen is when this attribute goes to true after three seconds it's going to spawn the player back in again so let's have a quick look so we die one two three back in the game but you might have noticed there it's kind of bad timing if we come back in here ah we're not going to come back in are we because our attribute still says true so when the actor spawns back in we want to change that player dead back to false so let's add in a change attribute into our timer on the controller so we're going to say when player dead is true after three seconds spawn the actor and change the attribute player dead back to false again so the game knows that the player is no longer dead so let's press play so it should stay false and then go true and then go false again when it spawns back in boom there it is not too bad now sometimes uh, and there, there we go keeps going keeps going not too bad now what you might want to do is at this point if say for example uh, this enemy spawns a, a projectile every two seconds right so if i change my timer to spawn the enemy uh, sorry the player back in after two seconds which is pretty much the same time it takes to spawn look what can happen see that spawns in instantly killed that's not good not a good thing at all so what we could do we could tell the enemy to only attack when the player is alive so that it won't actually spawn any projectiles until the enemy spawns back in again so to do that I can go to the enemy and add a rule in the condition will be based on the attribute player dead so if player dead is false then we take our spawn timer into that rule so basically what it says is if player dead is false in other words the player is alive then you can spawn it won't spawn any bullets unless the player is alive now I'm just going to move it down to one second so it actually fires every one second now just to show this to you so there it goes spawn its bullets every one second I get shot and it stops and it starts again when the player comes back in the game making it a little bit more fair all right great I think now would be a good time to get the life counter on the go which is kind of the main reason for the video so let's get that life counter on the go we're going to make a, a game attribute and this time it's going to be an integer which is of course a whole number and we're going to call this attribute player lives now you can decide how many player lives you want in your game I'm going to set mine to the magic number three and I'm also going to create a new actor which is going to be my life counter display if you like it's going to show me on the screen how many how many lives we're at so I'm going to make a new actor and I'll call this lives counter or lives display whatever you want and on that actor we're going to use a display text press the E symbol get rid of hello world we're going to go games player lives and uh, we want that to be let's just make it blue just so it stands out oops make it blue and we'll drag that into the scene just drop it in the top right hand corner so we should see the number three up there now yeah, very good but of course it doesn't go down yet okay cool so on the player now we're going to add this into our death rule okay so i'm actually going to rename that player death 
Um, so our death rule, when you collide with the enemy projectile, it will change the attribute player dead to true and it will destroy the active. But we also wanted to um, perhaps remove one from the life counter at the same time. So let's add in another change attribute. And we'll take that above the destroy actor. And we're going to find our attributes. So attributes, game and player lives. And we're going to change it to attributes, game, player lives, minus one. So that makes sure that it, it takes one away from whatever, whatever it currently is. If we just put minus one in there, every time the player gets hit, it will just keep changing the attribute to minus one. We want it to take one off what it currently is, which is why we have to use that particular method right there. So now, in the game, if we press play, you'll notice that the life counter goes down each time we lose a life. Got one life left. Oh, no lives left. And it's going to keep going into minus numbers because we haven't told it to do anything other than that. It's just going to continually count down. Now, before we continue, I'm going to make another scene, which I won't put anything in for now because we'll cover that in the next video. But I will add the scene and I'll call it the game over, or not game over, but game over screen. And I might as well rename the initial scene like level one or something like that. So in the game over screen, we're not going to have anything on there, but that's where we're going to go once our lives reaches zero. So back to our controller for this one, and I'll name these rules. So I'll name this one a respawn uh, player, and uh, just to tidy things up a little bit. Now we're going to make a brand new rule on the controller that says when the attribute, so attribute for the condition, when the attribute game player lives is we're not going to set it to equals to zero because we want to go from we have three lives two lives one life left um, uh, and then once we go once we, we want to keep that zero as a life so I'm actually going to set it's entirely up to you which way you do this but I'm going to set mine to is less than zero so if we drop down below the number zero we're going to change the scene and we're going to change the scene to the game over screen uh, and that should do the job. I'm just going to quickly rename that to uh, Game Over. So now, with this rule in place, if the attribute player, player lives goes below zero, we will go to the Game Over screen. We could set it to equal to zero if you like. I mean, it doesn't really make that much of a difference. We'll set it to equal to zero. So as soon as we reach zero, we go to the Game Over screen. So we're on three, we lose a life, we go to two. We lose another life, we go, we've got one life left, and when we reach zero, we go to the game over screen. We could put a little bit of a delay on there, you know, so it isn't like an instant switch, so we could put a, a timer and say, after uh, three seconds, run to completion, go to uh, the game over scene, or change scenes to game over screen. So we'll have a quick look, we're on three, now we're on two lives left, one life left, zero lives, we wait three seconds, ah, we might want to stop that enemy, uh, sorry, player from spawning back in again, so we could go to player, and uh, sorry, the controller, which respawns our player, and as an extra condition, we'll say, alright, uh, if player dead is true, and the attribute uh, game player lives is more than zero, then you can spawn yourself back in. So effectively saying, when it reaches zero, it won't spawn the player back in again. So three, down to two, and we spawn back in. Down to one, and we spawn back in. Down to zero, we don't spawn back in. And we go to the game over screen. All right, pretty simple stuff, not too bad. Now we could set this up with the uh, HP system as well. I've already done a video on HP. Um, so, you know, you could basically set that up to say, all right, uh, the player takes uh, damage from the enemy projectile that will change player HP to player HP minus one, for example. Um, and then for the player rule here for death, it would be instead of when it collides or overlaps with the enemy projectile, it would be when the player's health attribute reaches zero, then it would do all of this stuff down there. Essentially, it's exactly the same, just changing some of these conditions to work on the attribute of HP rather than the condition of a collision. All right, guys, well, I hope that's been useful for you, and I shall see you next time.